Um, one thing I always like to mention is that I have never unpacked a WordPress thing in my life. So you can run a business and not really know how to develop WordPress. It's almost like it's better because you have to hire straight away. So I always like to lead with that. All right, so first things first, let's stand up. <laughs> up, 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 up. <laughs> all right, so you all just had lunch, right? And you're probably like really full in the stomach and you're like, ate way too much out there because it looked really, really good. So I just want you to like shake it up and get the blood going anywhere else but your stomach, yeah? Are you feeling better? <laughs> All right, you can relax. That's, that is the participation that I wanted. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so running a business can be like riding big waves. So I'm obviously from Sydney. I love surfing. Um, I would not attempt anything of that size. I do little baby waves. But this is what running a business or lead generation can be like. At one point, you're at the top of the wave and you're just chilling and sitting and you can see exactly where you're going to go. And the next minute, you get completely wiped out. You're like, God damn it, it's not working. <laughs> business sucks. Now, most businesses that are sitting at the bottom of that pipe are sort of relying on word of mouth. Now, I don't know if you say this in your business speak or if you've got friends that say this, but I'm like, oh, how do you get your clients? Word of mouth. Oh, I've got, I've got the best word of mouth business. Um, I'm referral based. Well, I got to tell you, sitting in the back of the business, that's what referral marketing and word of mouth marketing does. You have no idea where the next lead is actually coming from because you're sitting back and you're waiting for it to come to you. You can't just simply turn on, let's say, Facebook ads and go, hey, referrals, come at me. <laughs> that just, that's just not going to work. Um, so you want to actually put a system in place so that you can turn leads on at any point. So that if you do need some more leads, you can go and get it. <coughs> get a bit of a referral here. All right, sweet. Um, big car fan. <laughs> I want to give you the power and I'm going to show you in four simple steps how easy it is to actually turn your business on its head and actually start generating some leads uh, for yourself. Now, this is a typical day. You might start at nine till five and there's like eight hours in every single day and you might be answering emails, checking project management, talking to one of your lady bosses, uh, talking to your developer, I don't know, going to lunch, having a coffee, like, I don't know what your typical day looks like, but in the end, it's, you know, if you're doing 20,000 things, it's going to start looking like this. And you're really spread thin. Think about if you were applying for the Olympics and you were going to be, um, you know, you wanted the gold medal for sprinting. So in between 8 and 9 a.m., if you trained for the 100 meter sprint and then you stopped at, uh, you know, 9, and then at, from 9 to 10, you then did marathon training. And then from 10 to 11, you did some high jump training. And then at 11 to 12, well, actually, you spanned it out to one because you got long jump. You're not very good at it. That might be how you're running your business right now. Every single hour is a very different thing. If we actually just did ding, <laughs> one thing, we'd all be gold medalists, yeah? Hands up, who's running their business like the previous slide? <laughs> Almost saw a hand there. <laughs> Yay, I love the honesty in the room. Yeah, cause I, I was definitely here doing all of this, 100%. I mean, I was doing logo design, um, InDesign uh, design sheets. I was doing some WordPress work. I was doing some Magento work. Um, we were doing some, a tiny bit of Joomla <laughs> work. I mean, a little bit of hosting, woohoo, I'm making eight bucks. Um, you know, and no wonder I wasn't profitable. But then when I got really simple and just did one thing and offered one thing, then everything got much easier, okay? I know, Whew, bless you. <laughs> All right, so I Googled um, web designer Sydney, right? And this is the first guy that came up. So I'm really sorry, Jimmy Webb, but you're now um, on the spotlight <laughs> inside uh, this chat. So Jimmy Webb, website. I don't know what your website looks like. 
Um, but this one is a typical one that I see from my coaching clients. So home page, about page, services page. I've popped over um, that services page tab and then, whoa, I was met <laughs> with a whopping mega menu of all the things that uh, this gentleman, all female, Jimmy could be both sexes, um, <laughs> is doing here. So as a customer, you've just put in web designer Sydney, let's say, and you've got to this guy's site. Now he's paying good money on SEO because he was like first. And then you get to the website and there's like, well, we do design, we do travel design, fashion design, handbags, jewelry, do you want a set of steak knives, um, development, e-commerce, hosting, marketing. Can you see how cloudy the customer is gonna be when they come here? They're not gonna know what to do. All they know is that someone said either, oh, you don't have a website, you should get one, or, oh, your website sucks, you should go and fix that. <laughs> Um, so they're going to come here and just be completely confused. Now, uh, click us over here. Um, good example is um, a tradies niche that I run. And basically, there is nothing else you can do on this website except go to the prime service page, which is the tradie accelerate system. That is it. And it's second. It's the most important thing on the page um, after the home page because that's got the downloadable free bait thing that, gets, uh, that generates leads. But this is it, like this is my services page. So when a tradesperson, now what's a tradesperson? A tradie uh, in Australian slang is like an electrician, a plumber, a uh, carpenter, you know, that kind of thing, yeah? So when a tradesperson comes to the homepage, they might download the free thing or they'll end up on the many calls to action um, to get to this page. Then they'll just see our one offer. We've got one offer that pulls them in and targets them and talks to them specifically for their biggest problem and we're talking about the solution. So we're saying, even in the speech here, like, you know, attention tradies are ready to be the superhero of their local community. Dominate your local area with the Tradie Accelerate system. Oh, what is that? No one else can sell the Tradies Accelerate system, can they? Because I made it up. <laughs> Um, so just doing this has completely simplified everything that we do in the business. And now when those leads come to this site, they get funneled straight to our core offer. Now there's only two things that we do in this business, either the Trading Accelerate system or a quick start system. Everything has got a name because that's marketing. <laughs> Can you imagine working with these guys? Like what do they do? Like think of your own site. What is your website? Do you have one of those services pages that have like web design and web development and WordPress? It's too much. Say so it's too much. <laughs> but he's the first one on the Google search. He was number one. So yeah, he's SEO. He's very good, obviously. And he would get calls, of course. He's first. There's like a thousand people searching for WordPress, you know, designer Sydney, etc. So he would get good leads. But imagine if he simplified his offer. Most customers have no idea what they want. They want you to tell them what to do. And if you show them array <laughs> of all this stuff, they're gonna get real cloudy and take a step back and take a breath in because this is tech. They got no idea what this stuff is and they're just looking for someone to lead them to the path where they can get a solution, okay? So in all of this, I want you to stay solution focused, yeah? Let's keep moving. All right, <clears throat> three reasons why most marketers don't niche. So lead generation, the best way to speed up lead generation is to actually pick a niche and to stick to it, and to stick with it. Now, <laughs> why do people not think uh, to stick to a niche? One, they feel like they're gonna lose an opportunity. Like, oh, I can't just work with photographers because there's not enough photographers in this world for me and I'm never gonna run a profitable business. Or, um, you know, I, I don't think that, I, I've got an accountant that's asking me for work and so I also wanna do some work with my accountant and I'll get back to the photography stuff eventually. And you're like in the middle of two worlds. I don't know how many clients you guys are working with right now, but if you're working from eight till nine, let's go back to that dial. If you're working eight to nine, 
on an accountancy website and then you go take a break <laughs> and then maybe 10 to 12 you're working on a cupcake shop and then you go and have lunch and then in the afternoon you might work on I don't know a financial planners website your day like you your brain has jumped from how does an accountant market himself online what do I need to do to build his site oh okay now what does a cupcake person do and how can I influence customers so that they buy and can distribute more cupcakes. You're, you're completely separating your, yourself and your energy is being split between different types of mind things that you've got to do just to get through your every day. Now, um, <laughs> when you just have one niche, it's so much easier because it's the same damn thing every day. And I know that seems really boring, but running a profitable business, I mean, business is fun, right? But if you can get things so simplified that it's one type of lead and they're coming through the door in one fashion and they're talking in a certain language and you can match their language because that's sales, you're building rapport, um, you'll start to have a lot more success uh, with those leads. Number two, I don't know what niche to pick. <laughs> Um, there are hundreds, um, I've actually got a, uh, what do you say, a worksheet to give you. Um, there are hundreds of niches to jump into and every single person I talk to doesn't niche because they cannot decide what niche to work in. Now, uh, you can start by looking at your passions. So what are you passionate about? What do you really enjoy doing on your every other day? Um, I, I like mountain biking, fast cars, uh, surfing, um, and my dad was a tradie, so that's why I did tradies. Um, but those would all be really good niches for me because I would enjoy the work and I would enjoy other people because I am one of those people, yeah? So if all else fails, look for your passions. Otherwise, consider Picking a niche is a little like dating. You just try it out for 90 days. <laughs> and if you don't like it, you swipe left or right. I don't know what way it is for dinner. <laughs> I'm married, so I don't know. <laughs> but um, you just try it out for 90 days, okay? You don't have to get married to your niche. So pick a niche and work with them. And if you do fall in love with them, awesome. Roll them over for another 90 days. If it was the worst experience ever, um, then wrap that one up. All right, number three. But I like working. <laughs> I like working with a variety of people. Yeah, no one ever said that ever. I was going back to the point before uh, where I was saying, in the morning you're with cupcakes, and in the afternoon you're with the accountants, and then you go into the financial planners. Like, who here? It has a niche. Like, does anyone have one single? Oh, yes, rock star, yes. <laughs> so, like, look at that. Two people in this entire room. One company. Oh, <laughs> one company. <laughs> in this entire room, niches, yeah? The fastest way to get ahead of your competition is to niche, hands down. Because lead generation, is going to get so much easier for you. Instead of you just winding up at Web Designer Sydney, let's say, with, I mean, that's good, good volume there, um, you're actually gonna turn into the, the, you know, the web designers, accountants web designer, or the hair and beauty website designer or developer or you know, whatever that your trade is. You're actually gonna become the specialist and all your messaging, I mean, if we go back here, Let's, I mean, oh, the site, you can't see the site. I'm sure it had something really awesome, like, we develop websites as, like, the headline. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like, cool, I've come to the right place. Attention, tradies who are ready to become the superhero of their local community, dominate your local area. They're like, this person gets me. So, again, when you want to attract high-quality leads, if you can talk directly to the lead, this is not tech crap that I'm saying. It's everyday human stuff that they would be saying. 
Tradies want to dominate their area. They want to become the local hero. They don't want to drive around Sydney. The traffic is really bad. Um, so I've taken that, you know, try and take as much out of conversations I've had with them and then drive all that content uh, straight into my website. So if I was working with everybody, I couldn't say that on the site, could I? Because, I mean, I would then upset everybody else and I'd be like, oh my God, that's scarcity. Let's keep moving. Ooh. How do you go from uh, unwanted guest? <coughs> I, I never use animations and I actually worked out how to use them, so I was very excited. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. To uh, welcomed guest, okay? Do you sometimes feel like an unwanted pest? Are you ringing people? Hey, your SEO sucks. <laughs> And you should totally take my audit and get this thing fixed. Or, oh, I did a website audit and I would like you to watch this video. Please let me know. Like, are you this person over here doing like cold outreach and trying to generate some sort of conversation with your customers? Or are you over here the welcomed guest, the one that's preaching about the hair and beauty salon website market and how you know, if you want to cut and color, if you want more cut and colors coming into your business, then you need a website that does this. That's going to make you a welcomed guest because you're not like everybody else, yeah? Trust. <laughs> I clearly forgot that one. Um, unwanted pest to welcomed guest. You just need to build trust. All right, so um, I niched in 2013. So my story goes back a little bit. Um, technically, I'm a graphic designer. I then got a job in websites. I fumbled my way through. I got a job. I got retrenched, and then I started a business, and then I hired a whole bunch of staff, and um, everything is awesome. You could say that. <laughs> um, but in 2013, um, I was running Summit Web Design, uh, the business that I just you know, made up the name. woo -hoo, that's what you do, I guess. And... Um, I was like everybody else. I was a web designer in Sydney. <laughs> I mean, I, I have an office in North Sydney and in my office there are five other <laughs> web designers Sydney. <laughs> so how, um, like I'm sure it's similar to where you live too, how on earth are you going to break out and be that one special person? Uh, so in 2013, I was like, you know what, I've heard of this niching thing and I think it's a really good idea. And so I just picked a niche and my dad is a tradie, so I was comfortable and I knew their language and their smell and their trucks and all this sort of stuff. And, um, and I just got real deep in the niche. Now the thing that I didn't do back then that we do now is that I was all on foot. So I was going to communities, I was talking to these guys, I was getting databases, I was taking the database back and then emailing them and trying to follow them up and then running around town and trying to get them into my world. My messaging sucked. I mean, look at this, like email marketing, website, online marketing and SEO, social media. Like I was doing everything again. So my mistake here that I want you to learn from is that although I niched, I was still doing way too much. Now for us to run a profitable company, that offers social media, email marketing, website. I mean, there's some software there that I'm gonna have to pay for. Um, there's some staff that I'm gonna need. So if I've only got one social media account, I gotta put one staff on to manage that one social media account. That's not very profitable, like, you know, that's not very scalable. Um, when you simplify your offer and you just do one thing, it gets a lot easier. So um, yeah, learn from <coughs> my mistake there. All right, things to look out for um, in niches. They need to be in motion. So don't go into uh, a niche that has no idea that someone like you is really important for their world. So you want them to actually know like of your service and they know that it's a value. And then you come in like a fresh glass of water and you're like, hell yeah. <laughs> Use me, yeah? So make sure uh, they're in motion and they value exactly what you do. Because there is nothing worse, and I'm sure this conversation has come up before, there's nothing worse than going, hey, 
would you like me to build you a website? And you're like, uh, I don't know, what's a website? You're like, oh, well, you know, we can build a four page website, home services about contact page. It's got, it's got a footer and a header and like all this stuff. And they're like, I don't know. <laughs> Do I really need a website? Because I've got a couple of clients coming in and out. Like, you don't want that client. You want someone that when you say, hey, like, you know, we build websites for hair and beauty, let's say, they're like, oh my God, I, my website really sucks and it's not converting and analytics is showing me stuff. And you're like, oh, they know what analytics is, thank God. Um, that's someone who's actually in motion. They, they need to have pain and urgency. So, <laughs> I guess, again, let's go hair and beauty, like waxing clinic, right? They need more people coming into their clinic to get hair removal. Or they need, you know, a haircut or makeup or facial or whatever. They sit there in their office every single day and wish that more leads would come in. That is pain and it's urgent because a good business owner would know that there's only so long this cash flow can last and we're going to start running into the negative. So I really need clients. So make sure your niche has pain and urgency. <clears throat> the easiest way to speed up diving into a niche is to actually get one that already has a community. So like in 2013, there was um, uh, trades, you know, builders, uh, networking, big uh, event companies that I could pay 500 bucks to and go and see um, 500 people and that instantly got me into the niche and talking to real people straight away and I would do one a quarter. So if you can find a niche that has a, a body or it has an awards ceremony or just some sort of community that you can attach yourself to, you're then going to be attached to an entire marketplace of people rather than just trying to scrap and get them on, uh, on the internet. All right, this is where I'm gonna jump in and do the, and hopefully tech does not get the best of us. Uh, all right, let's get some clarity here. I'm gonna take this out, bear with me. Let's hope that uh, Zoom actually works. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so this is a little exercise I've got for you guys. Ah, uh, stop my face. And it's on the wrong screen. The screen's gone dead, Rick. <laughs> Come back. So what have you done? You plugged in. Ah, uh, that screen's just gone dead. It's just plugged in? Ah, uh, that's not, no. That shouldn't go dead though. Like, where'd the slides go? Technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. Unplug it and plug it back in. Okay. Bingo. Come at me. Come on. Come on. Yay. yay. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. Sweet. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> hey. All right. Sweet. So this is an awesome exercise that I want you to do, okay? Oh, password. That's actually not it. Never work with babies or animals. Or live tech, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm breaking all the rules here. Ah, no, it's not gonna work. Oh, yes, it will. Go, go, go. Okay, that's not gonna work. All right, we're gonna stick to this. Okay, um, this is a good exercise. This is not gonna work now, that's great. Um, <laughs> Okay, great way to see what's actually going on in your business, okay? A, B, C, and D clients. So draw a quadrant. A clients, they're awesome. So think of clients that are actually awesome and you love them. An awesome client for me gives me their credit card straight away. On a sales call, they're 10 minutes and they're paid for. It's done. A bad client, a, and a dog is like, that's really down, D for dogs, but D dogs, a bad client, will actually call um, my number on the website and then want to just talk to me about, oh, what does the website do? And, oh, I did, oh, okay, I'll come back to you, I guess. Like, that's, that's a D client for us. I know, like, if someone calls the office or leaves a voicemail, I know they're a 
they're not going to be a client. An A client goes to that trading website, they hit apply for a call, they walk through a, a pretty hefty sales uh, form, name, email, how much revenue are you making, how much revenue do you want to be making. When those two questions come up, the lead has a choice. Am I going to be transparent and actually, do I want to change my business here and do I want to grow? Or do I just want to get on the phone and ask this chick some questions, yeah? And he's just moved straight down to a D. So consider your A, B, C, and D clients. Um, and, and like honestly, doing this um, uh, example really opens your brain to the types of customers that you have in your business right now that are actually amazing, but they're D for dogs or C, I can't deal. They're customers that call you 24-7 all day. Uh, B's are, you know, they're B for basic. They might do all the good things that the awesome clients do, but they're, they're just missing a few things. So if you know the kind of A clients that you want to attract into your business, then when you actually know what that customer looks like, you can drive them into the business and you can start to recognize exactly who they am. I, uh, ah, again, like me. <laughs> I'm trying not to get distracted by Ricky. Um, uh, a clients, I've lost my train of thought. Um, a clients, basically, I know that, again, D for dog, if they call me on the phone and start asking me questions, they're never going to be a client. But I know and I recognise that A clients, if they fill out my really scary form that asks them a lot of real questions, holy cow, it actually works. <laughs> um, then, then they're actually going to get through and become a client. All right, sweet. Let's quickly jump to this. Okay, there's only two different types of businesses, yeah? This is you over here, running your business. Woohoo! Um, this here is the plateau line. I don't believe in running a plateauing business. You're either running a business that's being profitable or you're running a business that is being unprofitable. In three minutes, <laughs> a business that is actually profitable is doing the same damn thing every day, pushing it out. There's systems and processes and everything works. P.S. Those are McDonald's fries. <laughs> this is a hamburger. This is a fry. Um, that's a shake and that's a taco. Do you see what I mean? When you are running a business that is pushing out logos, web dev, I don't know, hosting migrations and everything else that you can do, you start to lose profit. When you do the same thing for the same person every single day, business gets super easy. Uh, two last points. <laughs> I got 99, 99 problems, but traffic ain't one. <laughs> there is so much traffic out there. We, this is the best time to be running a marketing agency because you can just simply jump into Facebook and start driving leads into your business. Now, the problem with that Jimmy guy is that he's driving, he's paying money for leads, but he's offering a whole plethora. He's offering the buffet. I had a buffet this morning. I tried everything. <laughs> I really just needed an omelette. <laughs> But um, uh, it's going to be very difficult for you to generate more leads if you're actually doing way too much. Now, again, to go back to the start, the four most simple things that you can do to take away right now. Problem. Understand exactly what the problem is for your customer. Now, again, think of one customer. Think of all those A customers. What is the problem that they might all have in common? What is your core solution? What is the thing that you are selling the most, nine times out of 10, or that you love to sell it and you know it's profitable and you want to do it more often? Package it. Give it a name. The Tradies Accelerate System. What does that even mean? Okay, but for me, <laughs> it means that they're going to get a certain package out of our office. They can't take our document anywhere else because you can't get it anywhere else, okay? That makes you unique. Last piece there is market. I've got a freebie on the site, uh, Bitly WP S Singer S SGA. Yes, I've put, I've handpicked 300 niches that are awesome that you could potentially jump into. So if you want to kickstart your niching ideas, then you can go right there. Whew, that is it. <laughs> Tech issues and all.
I knew I was walking into a minefield. <laughs> that was awesome. Okay, have we got any questions for Stephanie? Do we have any time for questions? Yes, we do. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, the one company. <laughs> Yeah, hi Stephanie, I'm actually talking right up to you, so um, oh. this was great by the way. Oh, thanks. Because, because you are focusing on one niche so much, aren't you worried that sometimes like someone is going to come over, take over your niche and the diversification of your business, if you don't diversify or you're not thinking about it, you might kind of like get stuck in that particular niche and just die. Great, a great question, Eric. We have three websites <laughs> that are all niche websites that are all ranked and they all have their own marketing system. And so when a tradie searches for tradie website marketing, they get the tradie one. When a hair and beauty person is searching for a hair and beauty marketer, they get my hair and beauty marketing website. When someone in construction is looking for construction, they get my summit site. So <laughs> the best way to start doing the whole niche thing, and this is the most common question I get, is should I change my existing website or should I build a brand new one? If you can build a brand new one in a week, then build a brand new one. Because who cares, it's just a website anyway, it's all about the messaging. But if it's gonna take you six months to build a new site and for this niche it's gonna be the most beautiful thing ever, stop, don't do it. Just change some text on your existing site and just get going. Because the faster your wheels start moving forward and you connect the message, the problem, the solution, you market it, you're gonna have success. Hey. I just want to check with you, I find that this niche um, concept works pretty well for, let's say, if you are just thinking of starting your business or, you know, where you are on a blank piece of paper and you say, okay, I want to go into a niche and this is where I go and I built it. But if you are already currently in a business or your clients are already in business, you know, which offers so many different services, how, do you, how would you advise them to niche it from there? Uh, this is for your business? Um, not just for me. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I could, I could argue and say that we were running Summit Web Design um, who marketed and did everything for everyone and then we eventually just ripped that bandaid off and made that marketing niche one website and we just spent some time in there. So I just completely separated myself and started doing that. Um, that would be a good argument point to go from. Um, again, I think it goes back to point number two. A lot of people are scared to niche because it means that there's going to be no clients. So. <laughs> A hundred thousand dollars, um, eighty-six thousand dollars a month it takes to get to a million bucks. So are you going to have eight clients paying you ten grand? So you only need eight clients. So how hard is it to niche to get eight clients a month? Yeah, like if we just do the numbers, and it's really not that scary. Yeah, because you can still make a great business out of um, what you're doing. Does that help answer your question? <laughs> I know you've got probably a lot of good questions for Stephanie, but uh, as we're trying to keep on track here, I'll ask you to find her later on and she'll be happy to answer all your questions. Um, thank you, and so give Stephanie a big round of applause. Thanks, guys.